everyone. Thank you for tuning in to OC Spotlight here on Channel 39 in beautiful South Orange County. I'm your host, Susan Adelat, and I'm very excited to introduce our special guest. Today, I am joined by the talented Varun Puri, a local photographer and film student here at Saddleback College. Varun, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, Susan, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. So tell us, when did your passion for photography arise? It really started uh, just after high school. I'd done about three years of graphic design, and from there I, I started understanding you know, visual artistry. And you know, it was summer 2017 where I started experimenting with my friend's you know, iPhone 7 mm -hmm. Plus camera and the portrait feature on it. And we just started taking pictures of each other. And you know, fast forward to now late 2018, and I'd finally bought, in, bought my own DSLR, and I started branching out into my own photography, cinematography, and really just understanding how to utilize light and a camera in yeah. you know, visual artistry. So. That's great. So since you've established yourself within just the last few years, would you say that you've developed a signature style or preferred genre that you like to shoot? I definitely love shooting portraiture. Um, you know, I, I shoot about 90% portraiture, but there's also times where I do product photography, macro, wildlife, architecture, um, just to you know, under, like branch out and test my creative skills and put myself in, in you know, uncomfortable positions. And you know, in terms of like what I like to do for my portraiture, I really love utilizing like the background. I love utilizing color and, and just um, putting those two together and creating a moment in time that was really never there before. And that I think mm -hmm. is what photography is all about so yeah that's a great approach and we know you love portraiture but are there any interesting events that you've ever captured I uh, earlier in the year I, I took pictures at the uh, one of the Black Lives Matter protests and it was very interesting to be put in a situation where I didn't really have control over what was happening you know in you know my studio photography I would do I would have control because I'd have direction and everything mm -hmm. but to be in an event it's very interesting to not have that control and you know, let the, the moments play out because it really is a fleeting moment and that's what you're there to capture. You're there to capture moments that are not gonna be there the next day, you know? So um, just uh, different, showing these photos to people with different viewpoints and biases, it's, it's really an interesting thing about photography. It really is so powerful, so. Yeah, definitely, and it's such a intense emotional environment, so I'm sure that definitely adds to it as well. Well, it's time for us to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be back shortly to ask Varun some more questions about his photography. So stay tuned for more. Welcome back to OC Spotlight. If you're just tuning in, I'm your host, Susan Adelat, and I'm currently joined by local photographer, Varun Puri. Before the break, Varun discussed his personal style and we got to see some of his inspiring photography. So I would just like to know, what would you say are some of the biggest obstacles you've faced as a photographer so far? And what have you done to overcome them? I think the main obstacle I faced was, you know, not getting too comfortable. Uh, when you first start, you really try to take pictures of what's around you. And sometimes what's around you is really, you know, what you're seeing every day. And to, to put yourself in new situations and get uncomfortable and make those mistakes is really what photography is all about. And, you know, to overcome them, like I said, just, you know, putting myself in these new situations and trying to uh, learn about composition, editing, uh, lighting, working with the subject and all that. And, so uh, just trying to branch myself out and you know, not get too comfortable in my own photography. Yeah, that's great to always continuously challenge yourself. And you're a film student as well. Would you say that your experiences with photography have aided you or influenced your filmmaking or perhaps the other way around? 
I, right, like I, I started photography actually because I wanted to branch myself out into cinematography for filmmaking. And what's interesting is I never saw it as you know one or the other. I really saw it as you know photography is lay, laying a base for what cinematography is. So I thought that was um, it's it, you know it's really what I can just another facet of my visual artistry. You know I'm gonna they're both like hand in hand. It's photography and cinematography. It's not really one or the other. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have one final question for you. What is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started your photography career? Perhaps a piece of advice that you could give new photographers out there? Yeah, no, um, I think the one thing that every new photographer thinks about is what camera should I buy? And that is a valid question, don't get me wrong. I think it's just more so, you know, understanding what you're buying the specific camera for because it's, it's really much like buying a car, you know, like the car will get you from A to B, but really what do you want in that car? And so um, just understanding what your camera can do for you and what you can do with the camera. And today's technology is, is insane. You have these you know, great cameras in your pocket and you know, utilizing this iPhone to take pictures around you. So you can do one or the other. You're not limited by the cameras that you have. It's more so just limited by your creativity. Yeah, so do you still use your iPhone? Oh, definitely. I, I, I use it sometimes on photo shoots. Uh, just, you know, I'll have my DSLR hanging around my neck and it's just the, the iPhone's there as well. And I'll just take it out, take a couple pictures and edit it at home. So it's, yeah. it's one or the other sometimes. Definitely. And with today's technology, I feel like these phones have advanced so much, especially the recent iPhones. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, definitely. Um, the, like the iPhone 11 Pro is what I have right now. And it, it takes great video, takes great photo photography. So it really is what you can do with the camera. It's not so much what you're limited, what camera you're limited to. It's just uh, whatever camera you have in front of you, use it to the best of your ability. Yeah, I definitely agree. And that is some definitely wonderful advice. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we're almost out of time. Varun, it's been a pleasure having you here with us today. Thank you for coming in and sharing your experiences with us. Of course, thank you so much for having me. I'll, I'll talk to anyone about my photography and, and you know my visual arts career. So thank you for having of me. Of course. For those of you who would like to connect with Varun to either take a look at his stunning work or even hire him to shoot your own photographs, you can find him at Instagram at Varun Visuals or his website, varunvisuals.com. For Channel 39, I'm Susan Adelaide. and welcome to our interview. I am Varun Puri, and we have our next guest here with us today. Tonight's showcase, we bring you someone who has quite a bit of experience with gaming, Ariel Murpuyan. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Ariel. I hope you're doing well. Hey, Varun. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Of course, of course. So, Ariel, I've gotten to know about a little bit about you and your Smash Bros. career, but for those who are not familiar with the game, could you tell us a little bit more about how it's played? Yeah, so Smash Brothers is a competitive action game. You play as various video game icons, such as Mario, Pikachu from Pokemon, Sonic the Hedgehog, and they recently added characters from Minecraft. So it has characters from all, all over. And you just try to force each other off the screen. Just chaotic goodness. But that's about the gist, just, uh, you know, uh, characters du dueling to decide who's, you know, the top dog. And such a basic concept can become such a captivating game, right? Um, tell me what initially got you into this Ultimate King of the Hill. Yeah, so when I was about five or six, my mom got my brother and I a Nintendo GameCube, and one of the first games, if not the first game we got, was Super Smash Bros. Melee. And really, since then, I've just been playing that franchise for my entire life, following it, uh, following the new games, following the news for it, uh, and it's just been playing nonstop. It's so much fun. <laughs> And I'm, I'm sure your, your mom is very proud of all the hours <laughs> you put into gaming. And it uh, sounds like you started at a young age, as, as much as of, uh, much as of have. Um, since you've had all that time, I'm sure you have a favorite character do you like to use? Yeah, so I play as the Meat Gunner in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, and I played competitively. It's a very unpopular character, but it's a creative character, so you can design their looks and stuff. Uh, and right now in Smash Ultimate, I play as a recently released character. Her name is Min Min. Uh, I really want her in the game, and I actually use her as my Meat Gunner sometimes mm -hmm. in Smash for Wii U, so I was just super stoked for them. Oh, wow. I, honestly, I can say I've never really heard of those characters <laughs> until now. I'm more of a Meta Knight guy myself. 
Um, but since they're not so common, do you have like a unique way of using these characters? Yeah, so the Me Gunner, like I said, very unpopular, uh, mostly because it's not a strict game icon, it's a creative character. Uh, very unpopular. Very few people played as her. So in Smash for You, when I played competitively, I had to really push the meta for that character, try to like come up with my own playstyle, my own methods to try to take wins and stuff. And it was very fun and interesting, uh, but difficult. But still, it was really like fun to do. That's great. Yeah, and well, it's a good thing you started at uh, you know such a young age. You had plenty of time to work on you know your skills and create a unique way of playing this game. Yeah. Uh, well, we have to head to a commercial break, but when we come back, we will learn about Ariel and the Super Smash Bros. competitive scene. So stay tuned, guys, and stick with us, and we'll talk more about Ariel and his gaming career. All right. And we are back. Thank you for staying with us through the break. I'm Varun Puri, and this is competitive gamer Ariel Morpuyan. Uh, before you left, you had mentioned you solo coached yourself in this character, Me Gunner, for Super Smash Bros. on Wii U. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the competitions you entered in with them. Yeah, so uh, in Southern California, uh, we're very lucky to have a very thriving Smash scene. It's the home to a tournament organizer called 2GG. And as a team, they hosted weeklies uh, pretty much every day of the week barring Friday, uh, and they they just hosted events daily. Uh, and then outside of them, we also had weeklies hosted by other people too. But the Monday tournaments by 2GG usually had about 200 on average, maybe a little less than that. As far as like majors, like bigger tournaments, there is EVO in Las Vegas. That's a national that hosted, that hosts like uh, thousands of people uh, for different games too, not mm -hmm. just Smash Brothers. And then there's also like Genesis or Super Smash Con, Smash Brothers centered events across the country. Wow, that's that's super interesting. So you mentioned some local uh, tournaments as well, and could you tell us how, how they work? Yeah, so uh, a local generally is double elimination, so you can lose twice, uh, and you play your opponent in a best of three. So first to two wins. Uh, and then entry fee is usually about $15, five for the tournament itself, and then $10 for the venue. So like, you know, to pay the building to host the event. And from what you're telling me, there seems to be a loud smash scene here in the OC. And it's fun to be able to go big and, you know, compete in such a large setting. But mm -hmm. it's also nice to, you know, uh, have something to come home to in a way. So when you're home, do you ever play more for fun or is it always more so like tournament mindset? I definitely think uh, the two mindsets have kind of melded. I used to go to tournaments at the start just for fun. A friend introduced me, right? But, you know, I've been playing it for about five years now. And uh, when you play competitively, you kind of start seeing things people do and you go, ah, I see what you're doing, right? And you kind of get snarky about like, oh, I can beat this or, you know, all that. But uh, having that mindset specifically is going to really uh, toxify your opinion of the game and it'll make it really hard to enjoy it when you do eventually lose. And Smash Brothers uh, in its nature is very chaotic. So, you know, you're not always guaranteed a victory. So if you go in expecting to win every time, you're just not going to have a good time. So I try to always be fun first, you know? And I think that's just a healthy mindset to go out anything, you know, recreationally. That's that's definitely true. I think it is really important to have that mindset. of just, It's more of a fun, it's, it's a game to have fun with friends. And, you know, it sounds like a great group of people in the Smash community as well. And more than competitors, they're all friends, again. So uh, how do they encourage you or inspire you and push you to be a better player? Yeah, so uh, the Smash community I've met here in South OC has been very welcoming. Uh, a lot of friends I've made through it are going to be friends I have for the rest of my life, as if I met them through work, school, you know, wherever. And we don't always talk about Smash, right? It's just a common interest that got us to meet each other. So, you know, when we do hang out, it's not always about video games this, video game that. So, 
as far as like the game goes, uh, I do have a close friend that I probably consider a rival. You know, we push each other to get better, but you know that friendship is more important than you know just both being good at the game. Right. Mm -hmm. And well, thank you, Ariel, for joining us this evening. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a lot of fun to talk about this type of stuff. It is, and it's great to to, to talk to you about this. Um, and since I have a professional game predator right here, I have a game set up that I wanted to one v one with you. Oh, right now? Yeah. Oh. I'm down. Let's yeah, go. Let's do it. Let's go. So I chose Meta Knight. Oh, really? I, yeah. I went with Min Min. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to OC Spotlight, featuring stories and people from beautiful South Orange County. I'm your host, Angelo Macedo, and we're ex so excited for you to see what we have in store today. Sitting here next to me is Adrian Gallardo, an experienced student from Saddleback College about wrestling. Adrian, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. It's great to be here. Excited. Of course, it's great to have you here with us, too. So, let's get down into it. What exactly encouraged you to get into wrestling? Uh, well, when I was a young boy, um, I lived with my mom in an apartment. Um, unfortunately for us, we had to siphon our cable from our neighbor. <laughs> so, uh, it was this little old Mexican lady who only got like three or four channels, all in Spanish, so I couldn't understand any of them. But, there was a wrestling show that would come on um, kind of midday towards the night. Um, and I was so taken back by the pageantry and the showmanship of all these larger-than-life characters. It, it blew me away, and I was so inspired by all of them because there were small guys like Rey Mysterio, and then there were big guys that would come on like the Blue Demon and have this big cape, big giant guy. And seeing them, the continuity between both of them was really kind of crazy because uh, it, it showed the variety. So when I got to high school and they said, look, there's a wrestling team you can try out for, I thought, hell, like, might as well. It's not the exact same, but, you know, it's, it, it's wrestling. So that's basically how it all started. Definitely. I can see how wrestling can be, like, such a spectacle. Mm -hmm. So for our viewers at home, I know there's, like, uh, certain types of styles yeah. of wrestling, especially when, with the WWE. Could you tell us, like, what exactly are those styles and which one out of all of them would be your favorite? So if we're talking WWE, that's professional wrestling. That's pretty much a combination of multiple fighting styles. Um, it's all about showmanship and, like, like I said before, the pageantry. So it's more of a show than a sports competition. But that being said, that one's definitely the most fun because you get to choose your character. You get to choose, you know, uh, what moveset you have, what inspires you. You can be a whole different person, and it's, it, it's, it's a lot more, it's, it's very fun. Whereas the mat-based style wrestling, which is something you'd see in the Olympics or in high school, um, that's, it's very low to the ground and technical. So you earn points or you can pin your opponent and that's how you win the match. Um, but like I said, that was very of technical. Course. Of course, so we're about to go. We hope Saddleback College will be your first choice if you seek a dynamic, innovative, and student-centered post-secondary education. And we're back. 
Before the break, we asked Adrian about how he first started his wrestling career and which style that he preferred. But with experienced wrestling does come some challenges. So Adrian, what were the biggest challenge that you had to face in your career? Well, uh, starting out as a professional wrestler, um, coming right into that, I actually had a serious knee injury. Um, I tore my ACL, my MCL, my lateral meniscus. I did surgery twice on this leg. Um, and basically I have uh, no cartilage. I have like 0.2% cartilage in my knee. So every time I do any physical activity, whether it's lifting weights or wrestling, I have to wear an encumbersome knee brace. And on the side, there are two metal plates. Um, so when I would, if you get too close to someone, they're not covered either. There's two metal plates on the side. Um, so if I get too close or if I snag someone, I could cut them and make them bleed. And that's not what we want. So I had to work really hard with the trainers in the beginning to get around things that would be more simple for most people but I had to figure out a different way to do it so that I wouldn't hurt myself or others. Because, it, because if I land the wrong way too, um, there's no cartilage in my knee, so I could just pop right out and I'd have to go to the hospital or something. But um, yeah, that was definitely the biggest challenge at first. My God, like 0.2 cartilage in your yeah. knee. And it's still, all gone. <laughs> and you're still able to bounce back from that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was rough, but I did. Yeah, so I know there's like some people in wrestling who will want to go into the sport themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice to those kinds of people? Definitely. If you're trying to get into more of a professional styled wrestling, definitely watch as many matches as you can because that's where you're gonna get most of your knowledge from. Um, different styles of moves, different types of characters, different arenas, different matches. There's tons of different matches. So watching a lot of videos and figure out who you sell, who you, uh, figuring out who you are as a person first before you figure out who you want to be as a wrestler. Because all in all, it's an extension of yourself, this character persona that you want to show to everyone else. So you have to figure, you have to believe in yourself first before you can believe in your character so that everyone believes in you. If you're trying to get into map-based style, Greco-Roman style wrestling, definitely work with the coach because it's very technical. So you have to learn all the moves and you have to learn all the jargon. Um, but you also, a, a big thing, same thing as before, you want to watch a lot of videos because you want to see what beginners do, so that way you can get find a unique way to get around those simple moves like single leg takes downs and, and fireman carries and things like that. You want to figure out a, a unique way to get around those. That'll give you a big edge. Good advice. Now, I know that wrestling does come with like fun matches and even, yeah. some, like, wo even some famous wrestlers, as I can see right over here. Yeah. Um, out of all of them, which one would you consider to be your favorite? My favorite definitely would have to be um, Daniel Bryan, or for you indie fans, Bryan Danielson. Um, he's my favorite because we're, we're very similar in body type and height. For me, I'm about 5'9". Uh, that's, shorty, that's a shorty for uh, wrestling. Most wrestlers start at around six foot. So seeing someone of his height really get to the level of world champion was something that was super inspiring to me because it shows that no matter how tall you are, or, or he's a vegan as well. So no matter what your diet is or body style, you can of, achieve anything. Of course, of course. Well, thank you for joining us today, Adrian. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us today. My, I'm your host, Angelo Macedo of Saddleback's OC Spotlight, signing off. See you guys next time.